Uh, good morning. Today, the 12th June 2020, we are here to discuss and figure out how um, we are going to kickstart business uh, in the hotel industry. Um, we have been on the limelight for quite a while and because our business literally stopped the moment COVID-19 pandemic hit uh, the world. So I'm with the heads of business uh, developments for leading hotels in Nairobi and also I'm with the CEO of Kenya National Conventions Bureau with us. So I'll ask each one of you to introduce yourselves and then we can start today's discussion. Okay, so hello everyone. This is Eva Monkey. I am head of sales for Tribe Hotel and Trademark, both hotels in Gigiri. I'm looking forward to this second session of the boardroom. Thanks, Anne. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Maureen Ogola. I'm the director of uh, sales and marketing at the Hilton Nairobi. Um, happy to join this session. I missed the last one. I'm sorry for that. I had to fill out last minute. But uh, it's great to be with you and to see you guys again. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ronald Romo, director of sales of uh, Tradition Blue Hotel, Upper Hill, Nairobi. Thank you, Anne, for the invite once again for the second session. I look forward to the conversations and interactions for today. This is Peter Lale, uh, leading the sales and marketing function at the Hotel Interconnector Nairobi. Happy to meet the call. All right. Rosalind Dorati, Director of Sales and Marketing at Villa Rosa Kempinski and Olare Mara Kempinski. I'm happy to, to share on the insights from this conversation. I am Noma Maru from Move and Pick Nairobi. Um, I'm Director of Sales and Marketing. Uh, happy to be on the second call and lovely to see all of my colleagues on it as well. So look forward to the discussions. Thank you. Yasin Tanzioka, National Coordinator or CEO, Kenya National Convention Bureau. Uh, thank you for the invitation and I'm happy to share um, um, views and also uh, brainstorm with the heads of business um, uh, development in the key hotels in the country. We rely heavily on MICE for us to be able to meet our numbers and, and to do business and successful business, not only for the hotels, but for the destination. So I'll invite Jacinta to just take us through the steps. I know she, it's a rather new um, role that she took up and immediately she took up, then we had COVID happening and I can imagine it's like being thrown into the deep seas for you, Jacinta. So just take us through, how has it been? Um, at the Kenya uh, National Convention Bureau, uh, this is our fifth month uh, in operation. And as you can imagine, we, we were just laying the foundation when this pandemic uh, came up. And so we are not stopping. We are moving on with laying the foundation. There's a lot of um, consolidation and destination management frameworks and strategies and, and, and that have to be put in place. That is what we are working on, to be able to have an efficient organization uh, that will um, uh, also develop a nice brand for the destination in alignment with the, with the, with the mother uh, magical Kenya brand and position the destination as a unique uh, mice destination. So that's what we are working on. And then the other thing, of course, is to ensure that we have the right content and the right inventory of, of, of this country, How develop a proper, like a sales uh, kit that, you know, you can share around, you can talk to people, you use it as your, as your, as your marketing uh, material and uh, project a positive uh, uh, demand for, for, for the market. Um, a proper inventory, what, what, what is currently existing where in, in the destination. So that is what we are working on. And of course, capacity building. We are a new agency. We've never had a convention bureau in this country. We know the role of a convention bureau, but none of us has uh, uh, done this. So we are doing a lot of capacity building, uh, attending a lot of our trainings and semin webinars, and being able to entrench ourselves within the global meetings industry um, and, and, and you know, looking at associations, where the business leads uh, should come from for the destination so that we, we are fully uh, coordinating the MICE um, um, uh, marketing and promotional activities for the destination. The key for us is uh, to, uh, to look at stakeholder engagement because we are a liaison um, uh, between uh, the business, the market, and also um, agencies 
whose role um, uh, is perhaps uh, they hold meetings, they hold conferences, but they don't have a marketing uh, angle. For instance, the government ministries and uh, foreign affairs have all these conferences, you know. We are looking at um, uh, associations locally. How do we engage even all these venues that are outside of hospitality? You could have a venue, a nice center, but you're not in the hospitality industry. How do we bring this on board? And um, then, of course, uh, it's... Um, the service providers now, uh, the PCOs, conference organizers, uh, the meeting planners, the event managers, and also to revive the incentive market uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the destination. <clears throat> because um, uh, we, we stand um, in a good place as a destination for incentive travel because of the uniqueness of our destination. You can easily combine a lot of things and get groups to any part of this country be able to to offer them um, an incentive uh, holiday so that is basically uh, what what we are doing and and and, and looking at um, the current uh, uh, need for us to move on with or without um, opening of borders is number one to 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 educate to make all the stakeholders aware of these protocols that we are talking about. What are the protocols that the government has put out there for the entire tourism sector? Interesting, interesting points there. In fact, there is much, much more as hoteliers. I feel there's much more we are expecting other than what we had already planned and we thought um, we are getting there. So let's brace ourselves for more guidelines coming to the, from the government, guys. I think, um, Jacinta, that was very insightful. Um, when do you think that we are going to get these guidelines? Because we have requests for proposals coming in now uh, from various international bodies and some of these questions need answers and we could answer as a, an individual property only to realize that the government has come with other guidelines later and, and the request proposal has already been submitted. How soon will we get these guidelines? Um, I think one thing before I go to how soon is um, all the guidelines are developed in, in line with the World Health Organization uh, um, guidelines. So nothing is, you know, uh, absolutely dependent on Kenya as a destination or very unique to how we do things. It's just to ensure that how do you customize this WHO in all the process um, uh, maps within your, your, your organization. So I don't see any huge, if any, um, uh, diversion from what um, uh, the business uh, is already asking through the RFPs. Uh, in terms of when, really, and I wish I had an answer for you, but uh, what I can confirm as a member of the task force is that we have already finalized uh, some uh, draft uh, uh, protocols and our, our pointing authority is the cabinet secretary. Of course, these, you can imagine, have also to be checked and aligned with all the other protocols because we will not operate in isolation. What happens with the aviation sector? You know, we can't say we are ready and aviation is not ready. What, what happens with immigration? How are they going to be treating our guests as they come in and out? So you can imagine this is a time that government is consolidating and reviewing all the protocols. Okay. Nilma, what, what's running through your mind as you listen to Jacinta and, and looking at the bigger picture when it comes to mice? We were thinking of our meeting rooms your 600, 500, 300, or 30 boardroom capacity. And suddenly there's all this that the government is looking at, which sometimes escapes our minds because we are so focused on this one property that, that you're in charge of. I think I, I do agree with your center. To open the uh, borders, we need to be fully ready to, to market and to bring that. That's, we may not be able to host the same uh, numbers and and. As, as Ronald said earlier, the capacity is going to reduce to 1.5 meters each, including in the restaurants and all. But if we're not fully ready um, in terms of protocols and also to adhere to them, I, I see then that's going to be a challenge on even hosting meat. So I agree with her that the protocols have to be met. And of course, as the queries are coming quite from the corporate market and as well as what measures are you taking, how have you done it, these protocols will only enhance the hotel to be, you know, in a greater perspective to go out and sell openly safely. So I think it's a lot of, it sounds like they, there is a lot of work yet pending to be done, but uh, if the protocols are, are announced, then I'm sure we will be able to look into that and adhere to that, given that obviously for us we have, and also for Ronald, has 14 meeting spaces, which is typically a MICE hotel. 
Uh, this, this would be definitely a key for us to, to look at in terms of uh, being ready for mice. Um, Ronald, what's running through your mind with metastasis <laughs> and exhibition being one of the, the areas that you really keenly look at? You know, Jacinta, thank you very much. Jacinta has brought in a completely new twist, which I want to synchronize with what Eva, uh, Rosalind, and Maureen had mentioned. Now, you asked earlier about protocols that we're putting in place and how ready and preparedness we are. And as much as we may be ready as individual properties, this is not just about us as an individual property. As Jacinta mentioned, it's a spectrum. It's a destination. We all have to be ready in fighting this pandemic and just being ready to reopen, for, to accept and uh, receive business back. So it all starts from, you know, uh, the airport on arrival, the immigration, taxi from the airport to where this guest is going, you know, arrival, um, the eateries, where they're going out, if it's a business traveler, if they want to leave your hotel and go to their office, do they have a feeling that the destination, not a property, the destination is ready? And that's what Jacinta is saying. Look, there's a lot of coordination here. And if you ask me, I don't know how long that will take, but it has to be done right. Because again, you don't want to rush things, then there's a gap in between. Hence the reason why it's also difficult for her to say when some of these things will be implemented. So it's a very big picture to look at. And everybody needs to be involved and participate 100% uh, of it to be able to achieve the re desired results. So it's not what Trademark is doing or Radisson is doing or Kempinski or Intercon or Hilton. We are doing that, yes, but what else is being done out there for the traveler to feel that the destination is ready? Now, the destination is all of us. You know? So that's what's running in my mind. For it to be done correctly, as Jacinta said, the coordination with the airport, immigrations, et cetera, et cetera, that might take a little bit of time. And if you ask me when uh, the mice business might come back, I look at 2021. Yeah. yeah. Maureen, um, I know when, you, when we talk about mice, you're looking at KICC very keenly because um, due to proximity, you have... <coughs> Uh, business that um, trickles down to you out of KICC. Um, and now with, with all the guidelines that are coming up, um, how are you seeing that panning out for you? I, th I think um, like uh, from what the center has shared, it's, it's all about um, those guidelines and those, uh, those um, you know, the protocols that will come out uh, that KICC will also have to um, adapt um, I think that anybody who's going to have an event also at KCC will be looking at the hotels that the delegates will stay at and, and, and see what do they have in place, how does it link. So it's actually such a, a link. Um, what, one of the things um, that I also see uh, happening is, you know, before we've been selling our own properties directly, but then now with this new world, we're actually going to be selling at destination. Um, there's been talk about destination, selling destinations in the last few years. But then I think this is the game changer now. It's not going to be about Hilton or Radisson or anything. It's going to be about Kenya. What does Kenya have? What are they doing? What protocols do they have? So that, that, that is really the future. Yeah? Yeah. Great. Um, Eva, uh, International Congress and Convention Association, ICA, released their rankings, um, um, I think, last month. And we had South Africa, Rwanda, Morocco doing much better than we are in terms of uh, mice. Um, what's, what, what ran through your mind through that? Because if you look at, let's say, the flight, the connections in, in, in Nairobi, we do very well. Uh, if, if you're looking at a destination, we, we are an attractive destination, yet we were ranked um, below these three destinations. What, what went through your mind? 
Yeah, for, for me, definitely a, a surprise, but not fully a surprise because most of those destinations you've mentioned had a structured way to approach mice. They had a convention bureau that would market the destination for conventions. They go out uh, directly to the markets selling Kenya through the convention bureau. We didn't have that. I know KCC tried to fill the gap and they were doing a good job, but also KCC is a venue that's also trying to fill itself. So that there is a challenge there. So I am very happy to have Jacinta and the National Convention Bureau on board and starting and now creating the system that will allow us to market more impactfully within the world, within the associations that matter. So when we're looking for business and specifically convention and mice business we're able to be seen as somewhere that's well connected but also that's telling a story of what you can do when you come here through the convention center so the opportunity is there but yes the destinations that are ahead of us had a more well-structured approach to market to the mice market okay peter i know you have sold both you you've handled leisure segment in a big way and and now you're you, you're predominantly a business hotel one of the things that keep coming um over and over again and allow me to throw a spanner in the works is when we look at kenya tourism board sometimes we feel that the um, we are not connecting the sales and marketing aspect uh, of the product is not connecting and I'll give you a case example, which I keep thinking about over and over again. There is a time we had the cradle of mankind as our theme, as a destination, and it was amazing. We ran fantastic campaigns. Uh, we had it during WTM, we had it during Indaba, and it was massive. But when you go online and try and search that itinerary that includes the credo of mankind, you couldn't find it. So um, as a salesperson, one of the things that I asked is, so as a destination, we are marketing this product, but if I want to end that as a success um, story, then there needs to be a 360 degree view whereby I know the product, I love the destination, and then I buy it. But we got that disconnect. Um, Peter, what do you think we need to do to align ourselves with the, with the Convention Bureau such that um, we, we, are, we are talking one language, we are in sync, we are going to the market from end to end, where there is marketing the destination and you being ready to sell in line with um, the Kenyan National Convention Bureau's campaign and strategy? How, how would you want to see that connection going? Uh, thanks, Anne. I think a, a lot has been said um, partly by, by Eva. Mm -hmm. And of course, now we have just sent on board. Uh, this is something that we didn't have before. So are we surprised that uh, some of the countries are, are, that have been ranked ahead of us? No, we are not surprised. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, to have just sent to have the convention bill, which we didn't have before. So our approach to some of the, some of the, the, um, the bidding that we, we did out there were, were not structured. Uh, now with the convention bureau in place, I want to believe that we're going to have a more structured approach. But more importantly is that we, you know, Jacinta mentioned about the stakeholder engagement. This is where now the industry players like ourselves, the people that have got, uh, you know, conference facility, this is where we need to work very closely with, with Jacinta as an institution or, 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 or section of the business in order to ensure that whatever they, whatever we, the, the, whatever we are doing at the hotel level is coordinated or is, is in sync with what the with what the institution is doing, with what the convention bid is doing, so that if they're bidding for a particular conference, then we as hoteliers know that they are doing this, and then we can't be able to throw away to ensure that the bid is 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 absolutely solid. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what's been lacking. So if we if we have as you know, you know Jacinda has, has been at KTB, so she pretty much knows uh, you know the you know the you know what 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 the gaps that are there. She's well, obviously worked very closely with the cases in the past. She's obviously seen similarly what, what what's been lacking. So I think um, I would say that you know it's it's upon the hoteliers to work close with Jacinta and her team, and I hope that they can be able to you know get us on board so that we can be able to put something more solid so that if you are doing a bid at any one particular stage, then you know I know that I'm, I'm you know I, I can go out there knowing that convention bureau is right behind me in terms of if I need that backup. Similarly, they know that when they're going on there, 
They know that the hoteliers that have got have, have, have the who are the suppliers in this case, I, you know, are working very closely with them, and you know, they can they can be rest assured that we can be able to work this uh, together. Very good insights. Yeah, I think I like the fact that you're talking that that engagement is there such that we are open. We know that this bid is going on and we throw our weight behind it. And even you as a, an individual, so if you have a, a big convention coming up, you go to Jacinta, to Kenya uh, National Convention Bureau and discuss with them so that they throw their weight as, as a destination behind you. And I think that's 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 a very good and consolidating way, consolidated way of doing things. Um, Rosalind. How how would you want to see this coming along? Peter, actually, he, it's like you read my mind, Peter. But um, absolutely, it calls for greater partnerships and greater conversations together. Jacinta can't do it alone, and neither can we. So first and foremost, Jacinta, congratulations once again. Uh, we needed a bureau such as this. I know you said you're only five months old, but uh, you're already in the deep end because um, I, somebody alluded to it. I also see MICE returning in 2021. It's not our immediate um, segment market that will recover fast. That said, like Peter, um, and Anne, you had also mentioned it earlier, we now need to connect. This is Kenya, our destination, and within our destination, we have such varying propositions. All of us here are talking about the city, but there's bush, and there's beach, there's forest, there's mountain. So all those varying destinations, what is unique about them that makes Kenya holistically beautiful to come to as a MICE destination? So Nairobi, we can define what will our USB, USPs be to make our MICE, um, our MICE engagement exciting, different, and fresh. If it's the city, what is it going to be? Just uh, looking away from the traditional methods that we've been used to, but coming up with fresher ideas because the, I think we have, the, the products are already in place. So for example, if you're conferencing in Kakamega, how would it be different post-conference or pre-conference? If you're conferencing in a little town in um, Malindi, how will it be different? Um, even in Nairobi, away from the usual, how would it be different? So I think it calls for us, um, even as hoteliers, coming together to also give the Convention Bureau ideas of how we can um, enhance our selling proposition as a destination. And Maureen said it. We can't now say, I'm selling Kempinski, I'm staying to my lane. Eva is doing trademark. Rad Radisson is selling on his own Intercon and um, Moven, Pick and Hilton. We can't do that. We have to come together and say, this is our destination. How do we make it exciting? And what are the, what are the parts that are not that Rwanda is not doing, Morocco is not doing, South Africa is not doing, that will be unique to Kenya for us to really sell and come back to at least top three. And I'm sure we can because we have the product already in place. We just haven't marketed, marketed it. And as Peter said, Jacinta, you've got the KTB background. So you already know how to work things from a government perspective. So that's why you would help us in terms of being the liaison in terms of government to us. What are the things and the structures that need to be put in place to enable this product then, then become a reality. So that even as the Convention Bureau, even when you're selling our destination, you're not selling it as it's focused on Nairobi or it's focused on Mombasa, but it's focused on so many mice facets that are so delightful and that are so out of the box. And even adding our culture into it, our traditions into it, our gastronomy into it. So there's a lot more that we can do. And I think this season is teaching us to open up a bit and um, we stop working in silos, but we we now accommodate each other as much as we are competition we are also cooperating so that we can um, you know we can we can do something great for our destination and be known as a destination that does things um, differently and cleverly and Eva alluded to it and I had not seen it that way before KCC was also looking for they're also a destination sorry they're also a, a product so they're also looking for their own selling so tasking them to sell the destination and also sell their own product, I think you know we were now, now we have put things right and 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 we have the vehicle in uh, the convention bureau to enable us get to where we need to go. So it calls for us to open up our blinds and do um, and, and 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 come up with a craft a really great product that is Kenyan mice and and only unique to Kenya. That even if somebody else tries to borrow, they cannot make it as unique because Kenya has unique facets that can't be copied. Mm -hmm. 
Jacinta, you have the people who have um, the facilities. You talked of capacity, um, putting together um, uh, an inventory for capacity. And I like the fact that um, the Kenya National Convention Bureau is not looking at government institutions. They are looking at your your product, my product, um, other, other uh, facilities that are within the country that can hold meetings, conventions, exhibitions, events. And so they're putting all that um, inventory together such that when they're going out there identifying the opportunities, they know that the, the capacities they have um, back home. Jacinta, this, the, the team here are out there bidding and, and sending proposals and um, uh, giving pitches, negotiating for, for meetings. What are you expecting from them? Uh, thank you, Anne. Um, the team here, of course, um, in the customer phase, they, they, they have uh, clients, they know exactly what uh, the client wants. And when we come up with the framework of consolidating this inventory, we will need their input as to what does the customer want for a venue? What does that customer want for a, for, 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 for a destination to be able to, to make it competitive? So that what we are consolidating is what the market needs. And, and, and also the other thing is I would like to see um, you know, improvement in the MICE infrastructure that we have as a destination. Um, and these COVID uh, times have shown us and has brought about um, uh, new opportunities for holding events, meetings, and, and exhibitions. So there's going to be need to innovate as a product individually. So what you do is your competitive age. And that is amazing because if we can pick out some very key um, experiences and, and venues and facilities and be able to showcase them to position Kenya as attractive, that will make our job really, really easy. The other thing, of course, is uh, for us uh, to work directly um, uh, with the corporates and be able to, to reassure them that uh, they support uh, from government. A lot of times, even associations or even individuals who are members of association, international associations, sometimes you're in a, in a forum and you wonder, should I put up my hand um, um, uh, to say that Kenya would, would be interested in hosting this event you don't know whether you will have any support now you do have support here you can comfortably say if you're a dentist based in kenya you are an international forum of dentists you can say yes we are interested then come back and speak to the convention bureau so that we are able to put together a competitive bid and go look out for this uh, meeting so 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 what i call upon uh, from this uh, team is is collaboration it is sharing of that market uh, insights and intelligence that the client wants so that our destination can be positioned uh, competitively. We don't have a product, we're a government agency. The product is what you have and you are in, in direct uh, contact with the client. So that uh, line of engagement is going to be very, very critical for us. So we'll definitely be um, engaging with you so that we come up with this together so that it makes sense for, for, for the destination. Bidding is a very expensive affair sometimes, depending on the kind of uh, conference or convention you're going for. Uh, as properties, we do not have the budgets for it. How, how will that be handled uh, moving forward? Um, of course, uh, for some of these uh, conferences or meetings, there's what we call the subvention fund. And, um, that you have to pay to the meeting organizer to be considered as a, as a, as a destination. So this is an area that uh, nobody was handling. Now that we have a bureau, this will definitely be uh, managed by the bureau. And um, in liaison with our Ministry uh, for Tourism and, and all the agencies uh, that um, are involved in uh, uh, tourism development, we, we are working on, on a framework of how to be able to access some of this support because um, it benefits the whole country. Even though the event is held, say, at Kempinski, it is good for the destination in so many other ways. So the Bureau will be able to, 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 to manage uh, this um, as a pension fund and indicate to the industry what is this fund about, how do you, um, how do, how do you access it, for what sort of meetings uh, do we commit this fund so that it's very, very clear um, uh, what sort of um, uh, support uh, there is, is, is going to come out of this fund. The other important thing, of course, <coughs> is that um, now um, 
we all have to learn how to host virtual events. I mean, this is new for all of us. We all have to learn how to host hybrid events. There's a lot of uh, seminars and, 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 and trainings happening, and, and I will share uh, some uh, uh, with you guys in the, in the evening. There's one by Sevent on how do you host a hybrid event? What do you need to know? as a venue or as a meeting planner or a service provider about hybrid events. Because uh, to be honest, I think we, we should be open to the, to the reality that we will face to face will not come back immediately. So we have to find a way of monetizing these virtual events. We have to find a way of making it um, a, a going concern of uh, hosting hybrid events. Um, and so this is the area that, uh, that definitely we, we have to look at. Uh, Jacinta, I'm just so happy that you now have set up the uh, Kenya National Convention Bureau. We support it. Ask for any assistance from us. Uh, I look forward to working with you closely when it comes to any requests for proposals that need the destination marketing and maybe even give you ideas on how you can assist us. But I have a very direct question, and maybe you don't have the answer. So in the budget reading uh, yesterday, they said that tourism and hospitality sector the, there's a temporary lifting of bans in holding meetings in private hotels. Mm -hmm. Are you able to share more on what that means? Does that mean now we can hold more than 15, uh, 15 people? What does that mean? There was a circular that uh, uh, government agencies, ministries, departments, parastatals only have hold their meetings in government facilities like KCC um, uh, and, and their hotels owned by government. But now that ban has been lifted so that uh, we can host meetings in private uh, the owned uh, hotels. So it's, it's good for you in the private sector. Okay. Thank you for the clarity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Eva. Sorry, Jacinta, does that mean that the numbers still remain to the maximum 15 or well, will that be adjusted anytime soon? Uh, the, um, Yesterday wasn't about the numbers uh, of 15. The protocols that we uh, drafted have proposed uh, a change to this number and uh, look at the capacity that you can hold, not, not based on the number of 15, but based on the size of your venue. And I said earlier, if you can host an event under canvas in the Mara or in Kakamega, and this event can take 100 people with the proper social distancing that uh, is, is required. Must you just, you know, just settle on the 15? Must you, so, so that is a proposal that we have made. And we are waiting for approval because it has to go to the health ministry. It has to be aligned with, you know, many other uh, 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 guidelines. So we realize definitely the 15 is, uh, is, is what is currently uh, enforce and so it hasn't been lifted until it is lifted we we cannot um, um, uh, talk about um, anything else and and you have seen in other countries in fact like Nigeria opened um, 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 their, their, their mice events uh, and and they gave a guideline of I think 10 people most of the destinations are giving a maximum of I've seen in Africa uh, 50 packs. So let's wait and see, uh, but our proposal is uh, definitely um, uh, um, as, uh, as a proposal in the task force uh, uh, guidelines that we have presented to, to the ministry. Thank you. So just, just to be clear, Jacinta, so we are still at 15. As of now, it's 15 until that proposal is passed. Until the proposal is, is passed, we are still at 15. Okay. okay. Great. Maureen? Thank you, Anne, and uh, thank you, Jacinta. Uh, exciting to always interact with you. And um, as you know, uh, as I've told you before, uh, here for you, any support you need, um, call on us. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to you um, hosting us even Zoom meetings. And let's brainstorm together because we want to tell this destination and support you. And of course, we also want to benefit from it. So you call on us and uh, we can use all our support together with your team. Thank you. Thank you. So Jacinta, um, once again, um, for me, I think you've answered the questions that I had in mind, but uh, here to support, if you need any information, if you need any insights, if you need fresh ideas, 
Um, we're ready to collaborate. As I said earlier, it's now a conversation of we must get into greater partnerships, widen our scope to set our destination, because if you win, we win. If yeah. I win, we all win. Yeah. So I'm here to support. Just uh, feel free to call up um, and, and, and I'll be here to, to help with whatever, with, with whatever you may require. Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Ronald? Um, I don't have a question per se, but I just want to reiterate on a few uh, points that my colleagues have mentioned as well. Uh, cooperation, collaboration and partnership will be very, very important uh, between us properties and the National Convention Bureau. And I think, uh, I believe Jacinta, you're the right person for the job. Um, and we're looking forward to partner with you. We're looking forward to work with you. In case you need anything from us, just let us know. We'll be there to support you because it's a breath of fresh air to have this at the, at the moment now. Of course, it's long overdue, but that's the past. We have it here. How do we move forward? That is what is most important. So we need to reclaim and take back the country to where it was before. You know, right now, we're not in the top three, top four positions as a MICE destination. We need to reclaim back that. So for us to reclaim back that, Cooperation and partnership is very, very essential. And we look forward to working with you. Thank All you. the very best. All the very best. Peter. Peter, um, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Um, so I met, I met uh, Jacinta's uh, team, I think, last year in December, November, December. And I was very excited that we finally have a convention bureau. Uh, I, I must admit, because you know, looking at South Africa, looking at looking at uh, looking at Rwanda, looking at uh, other countries that have got convention bureau, as I said, you know, they've had a much more you know better you know better coordination in terms of when they're bidding, and you know, uh, you you don't you don't get surprised why they win more more of these big conferences that uh, than Kenya. So to have that, to have now convention bureau in place, as the rest have said. It's a, it's a, it's going to be a lot of partnership, and um, I'm hoping that you know when all this is said and done, we can have you know we can have a we can have a meeting at some point uh, late in the year or next year where we can just put our heads around and see what 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 what, what is South Africa doing, what are different convention bureaus within South Africa, and it's interesting to see the way the South African convention bureaus they compete among each other. Yeah. You, know, you know, from Cape Town to Durban to, you know, to, you know, to Gwateng in, in, in Johannesburg competing and, you know, hoping that we can be able to, you know, you know have, have a session where we can just be able to, you know, walk through what we, what we need to do as players in order to ensure that if, if we get a lead that is for 2024, how then do we approach it, you know, from your end and how do we, uh, to ensure that we, you know, we, we basically win the business. So, uh, my, my my hope is that we can be able to engage a lot more with the institution going forward. You know, for the for the for the for the benefit of the country. Thank you, thank you, Peter Nilma. I totally echo with Peter. I mean, when we travel to South Africa and and all these other places, you know, we were lacking the convention bureau, and now that it is at our doorstep, uh, I think it's quite exciting for us. Um, we are looking for that collaboration and support and in anything that you require from my end, uh, happy to support you, happy to be uh, to give you an insights being from mice and mice trends. And, and I do agree, we need to do a different call just on mice and to see what's what's coming in one, once we've got the establishments and protocols all uh, done in. But look forward to working with you and uh, uh, good luck in the new venture. Um, thank you so much, uh, colleagues, and I really appreciate uh, your openness and, um, and, and, and your support. Thank you so much. We'll definitely be in touch with updates um, with regards to what we are doing and where we uh, can collaborate. I just want to say three things very quickly. The first one is, um, in times of crisis, a lot of uh, fresh ideas come about. And, and as a young organization, we are, we are agile and we can, we can be quite um, um, uh, innovative. We don't have... Um, you know, past luggage uh, or baggage, and, and so we can we can be fresh in the outlook. So, so such discussions give us a lot of um, of of, um, of hope that we can do things and do things uh, differently. Number two, and I think uh, most of you have agreed to this, is that we must uh, market our destination as Kenya first, because now more than ever, this pandemic has showed us that 
we cannot survive on our own. We can, it cannot be about a property. It cannot be about a sub-destination. It is the whole country. So uh, cooperation, which is, um, is, is, is what I'm calling uh, for, should be what is guiding us so that we collaborate even though we are competitors as individual properties, but we must collaborate so that we put out there a strong case for Kenya. Our guidelines, our protocols, should actually be um, part of our marketing material to show how prepared, how, what sort of reassurance we are giving to the destination. So, so that is um, uh, amazing. Last but not least, uh, you've seen from um, reopening of, uh, of, of other region, parts of the world, other regions are looking at opening up to the neighbors first. Mm -hmm. You're seeing regional travel bubbles uh, actually just developing around the world. How, how are you as business owners are thinking about that in terms of, you know, you've seen Australia and New Zealand, Iceland and neighboring countries. Germany opened and said they will only allow people from the EU. What happens to Africa? Thank you so much. Uh, for me, it's, it's very exciting to know that now you have a government institution on board when it comes to uh, bidding, the bidding process of, 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 of mice. Because, believe me, and I believe some of you have gone through it, there is a time you get um, a document and you're supposed to, to give all sorts of um, suggestions and, and um, sometimes you're looking for waivers, sometimes you want sort of to, traffic to be managed, sometimes you want to do something in the national park or they're asking for pre and post and you go to individual two operators and you're still not getting the kind of experience you want to put across for, your, for the meeting. And sometimes we lose and, you've seen, and we've seen um, instances where we've lost um, a bid to even another destination purely because you're trying to struggle and work through it alone. But now it feels good to know that you have you have the um, Kenya National Convention Bureau. When such a request comes through, you can go there and she'll get all the waivers that you, you need or you can try and create that that experience you want to create for for for, for the meeting for, for your delegates and with the the, the backing of the government. Um, so Jacinta, thank you very much and, and be excited to have you on board and uh, with this team, we will work closely with you to ensure that um, Kenya National Convention Bureau gets, gets us to the top of the ranking within the next few years. <laughs> and and more so, um, the other exciting bit is at, at least you have the properties, you have capacity, be yeah. assured. At the point where you start building that document, the team here will be more than willing to give you all the data yes. you need yeah. so that you can, as you go out to bid, you're confident that you have the capacity that can hold um, the kind of convention or, or uh, the, the meeting that you want to bring into the country. Thank you for creating time for being uh, to be here. So let's keep engaging so that uh, we walk through this together, we share ideas and, and we run successful businesses. Thank you.